Hello world! Uh, today I want to start prototyping new experimental format for Byte Relay channel and uh, I will be doing short series explaining uh, different uh, subsystems of Postgres and how to hack on them, how to modify them and uh, today I will start with a simple task of just getting the source code of Postgres, compiling it and adding a very basic feature. I'm not sure it will be interesting, but I will try. So, to start you have to git clone something. Usually I'm taking uh, stuff from GitHub. Uh, you may want to reduce time of cloning by figuring out only a single branch. And usually you hack on master branch. Let, let's pretend that finished successfully. Here I have already local copy. Actually, after cloning uh, GT repository, you will need to brew install various uh, dependencies like flex, bison, and uh, zlib g or something like that you can find it on the wiki of postgres project i will put a link under the video let's pretend it's all there first thing uh, there are two ways to build postgres is there is a meson build and auto tools build i'm using auto tools just traditionally but if you like new stuff probably you should try another build let's do auto tools configuration configure uh, you can specify prefix. Prefix is a place where binaries and libraries will live and uh, specifying prefix you are guaranteed not to have any side effects of your installation. When you make Postgres it will it will not interfere with other Postgres installation on your systems independently is it the Linux or MacOS or any some other Unix systems. So I'm usually building it at home project. Another thing that you need is enable depend and enable cassert. Uh, second last argument is necessary if you want to be uh, to, to, to be sure that asserts fire if something wrong in the code. So let's do a configuration. Again, it will take some time. In my machine, typically, it takes like 20 30 seconds. Here we go. Let's check what's in project. Oh, there is lots of my stuff, but there is a bin folder. What's there? We see there is executable Postgres, PGBench my favorite tool psql so everything that we want actually let's try to initialize new cluster uh, first thing first kill other postgreses kill nine postgres initialize some test cluster hmm, directory exists seems like i've been doing something like that initialize new test cluster pgctl d test start system is ready to accept connection sql postgres this is a that the database name seems like it works select one yeah stop it hard way uh, when you work with code, you actually don't want to create much clusters. You want to usually temporary installation to run some tests and it's already automated. Ju just run make check. This is a basic battery of tests. Hmm. It takes some time because I didn't compile stuff. Make with 10 jobs. Usually you want to run um, make into dev null because 
it will show you all the warnings in the code. If you have done something wrong, it will just make sure that you know that there are some warnings. Hmm. Waiting, waiting. Something's going on. Compilation is hard at work. I've cleaned all the stuff before, so that compilation may take up to one minute or so on my system. Yeah, it's done. Make install just in case to really compile these binaries. It seems like they were outdated. Yeah, they were from 30 minutes ago. I was doing some Postgres before. Uh, and uh, to, to run battery of simple tests, you just can run make check. It will create temporary installation, uh, create a cluster and run simple tests through, the, through, the, through this uh, temporary installed cluster. Uh, typically it takes about 30 seconds on developer machine. If you have laptop, if you have desktop, probably it will take less time. Or if you have the server, it will be even faster. Okay, everything seems to work fine. Time to code. I usually use Visual Studio Code. And uh, today I want to try some very simple feature. For example, let's try to enhance binary search algorithm in B3. You can find nb3c and nearby there is a nbt search. Where is the function bt bin search? This is a function which takes a key uh, and walks through uh, tuples on a B3 page to find nearest place to the key given um, to the search to the search so here we have a scan key for a search and buffer with a page which will be converted to actually pointer uh, to some data and access it with typical binary search with a high and low boundaries uh, partitioned by half uh, again and again but what simple way to enhance binary search if actually uh, distance between high and low is not that big, say 8, we can just do linear search. Why not? How do we do that? We just copy this fancy binary search code and uh, we don't need middle element. Comment will be wrong already. We do comparison with a low key and do one by one scan of a low key. When when we found discrepancy, we just do break. Hmm. Looks good. So, if we have a distance between high and low lesser than 8, we do linear scan. If we have more elements, we just do binary search. Okay, let's see what's the difference. Mm. Okay, it's there. Uh, what files are changed. We changed only one file, nb3 search. Let's check that everything still works. Make check. Uh, compilation will make a new temporary installation with actual binaries reflecting changes in source code. So it will take some time again. Yep, but faster than full build from scratch. Seems like everything works. 
this is kind of suspicious when program works from the start. Let's break it intentionally. How to break tests? Let's emit error here. Say elog e fatal boom. Now tests should definitely fail if this part of a code is not executed. Let's wait for previous tests to succeed. It will take a few some time. Yeah, test succeeded. Observe that we really made change to the code. Where is our boom? Yeah, boom is there. You see? Here, boom. And make check. What's going on? Uh, actually, these tests did not run because binary search is necessary to bootstrap new cluster to initialize files. Uh, but we know that at least <laughs> test check it that our code is triggered. But actually, to exercise more tests, you should run something like make check world. But that's uh, can be automated on many platforms. To do so, just create a branch. Uh, test CI. You have to add your uh, Postgres fork to GitHub uh, CI. And then when you push it into your fork, see? I've just pushed it to my fork. Uh, you will observe that there is a branch. Where is it? SCI. Here we see. Oh, hmm. nothing is committed actually. Yeah, yes, yes. It commit. Uh, commit everything that's changed. Everything that's changed. Commit. Uh, in Postgres, we usually write multi line comment explaining what is going on. Invent new cool binary search. search. Previously, we were doing those. Actually, this, is, this commit message is quite bad because it doesn't describe what exactly we did. Anyway, it just looks okay. <laughs> Let's push it now. Git push. Now we see our commit in GitHub and we see that CI is running. I'm almost certain that all tests will pass and I will not be checking it on video. Last thing that I want to show you is that when you want to share this code, you have to send the patch to pgsql hackers mailing lists. To do so, you write git format patch one recent commit with version Actually, one, this is just for to, sh to show how format patch. You see, you, uh, we have formatted new file v133 invent new cool binary search. This, this, this kind of patches I usually send to mailing list and discuss. Them. That's, what, that's all what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, please add in comments, topic, uh, questions, topics uh, about which subsystem I can describe more in a code or in a hacking way. 
so that you could uh, maybe learn from it or I can learn something by discovering these subsystems. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.